everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be talking about the books that I am hoping to read this fall. I feel like fall is like basically over. It is honestly the season that goes in a blink of an eye because it feels like it starts and then it's literally like Christmas, so then it's wintry already. So with that in mind, we're also like Basically, we're quite a ways through, right? So I decided to go with kind of more of a baby TBR than I usually would. I did have a way more giant list of books, but I decided to save those, have them on the back burner, uh, because it didn't make sense to me, right? Like, I was like, I can talk about all these books, but am I really going to get to them? No. So I decided to curate the list a little bit more, but I'm really excited about the books that I have here. You can definitely tell that it is like a fall pile versus a spring or summer pile because the spines are all so dark, like literally. It's so funny how it changes from like season to season for me and it's not even conscious, it's just because of the kinds of books that I like to read in that season. This time of year, kind of like to read, like obviously Halloween has passed, but I still like to read those kind of spooky mystery sort of stories. I like to read dark academia. I like to read historical fiction, just kind of anything like that, to be honest. There's really not a lot of rhyme or reason to this pile, but let's just get into it. I just wanted to take a second to thank Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Scentbird is a monthly subscription service for fragrances. You can choose a new designer fragrance to try out every month, but don't worry, you can always skip a month, so you don't have to get a new fragrance every month. It's just, it's a lot of fun if you do and helps you to find a scent. I love smelling good, but I don't like to like commit to a full bottle of perfume when I'm shopping in the store because I need to like wear the fragrance and get used to it for a while, which is why Scentbird is so lovely because it gives you a 30 day supply. The vial is way more than you would ever get if you got a sample just in store. If you don't know what you're looking for, they have a fun quiz that you can do where they will help you out. They carry over 600 different brands. They also have a new style of vial which is super cool. I really, really like these. They seem like a lot fancier than the other ones. I really like the other ones too because of their portability, but these are just so like fun. And also they're the same size as the others. So they're like equally as portable. I've been traveling so much and honestly that has come so in handy. But you can throw this in any bag and like there's a locking mechanism as well. So you don't have to worry about it spilling or like opening and spraying anywhere because you can lock it. You can lock it and unlock it and then use it. I honestly love working with Scentbird because I love trying new scents. It's like my favorite. I, I'm obsessed with it. So for my scents this time around, I got Vanilla Sky from Skylar Clean Beauty, which has notes of cappuccino, pure vanilla, and caramelized cedar. From Soleil, I got Lalique, which has notes of cafe latte, almonds, pink praline, jasmine, and musk. Basically, I like to smell like things that I like to eat. I mean, not musk, obviously, but like pralines, coffee, almonds, yes. From Christian Serrano, I got Silhouette Au Naturel, which has notes of mandarin, peach nectar, water lily, coconut blossom, and skin musk. And the final fragrance that I got is Monique Lullier. I might be saying it wrong, but I'm gonna say it with confidence. This has notes of Sicilian bergamot, cassis, Fraser bouquet, Lang Lang, and lacewood. I'm not sure if Lang Lang is pronounced like that. It has a Y in front, but I feel like it's probably silent. I don't really know. I love all of these fragrances, honestly. I can't wait to start wearing them and like trying with a new fragrance every day. It's just so much fun. So if you guys are interested in trying out Scentbird, I definitely highly recommend them and they have a really amazing deal for you guys. So make sure to click the link down below and use my code, which I will have on the screen, for 55% off your first month at Scentbird. That's only about $8 for your first month. So definitely really affordable. So thank you so much to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. For the first book that I want to talk about today. It is Wild Woman and the Blues by Denny S. Bryce. This cover is stunning. I'm so into it. I love the colors and everything just obsessed. But this is actually, once again, I've read quite a few books like this where it's kind of like a dual timeline thing. So it's set in 1925 in Chicago and we have like jazz and everything is obviously super prevalent around this time. But then it's also set in 2015 and it is following a film student. So it's kind of also giving me Evelyn Hugo vibes because we have the like back then where it is like um, prohibition and everything. There's the jazz age. And then we have a film student who is at the bedside of 110 year old like 
character from the first part, Honoree Dalcour. And like, she wasn't famous per se, but she does have this link to like this legendary man. So that is being explored. So this definitely seems super interesting. And like, if it is a comp for Evelyn Hugo, I feel like this book should be getting more attention. But Jazz Age Chicago, that just sounds amazing to me. Next is Echoes and Empires by Morgan Rhodes. Morgan Rhodes is the author of the Fallen Kingdom series. And then there was like a spinoff that I really liked. I only read one of the Fallen Kingdoms books, but I liked that one as well. But this is a new fantasy by her. So it's all about forbidden magic. Like it's a world where magic is illegal and dangerous and someone ends up being infected with it and like they're trying to hide it and everything. So it's just like a twisted web where I've definitely read like books where magic is forbidden and not allowed, but this seems to be a more high stakes one. And the magic being an infection seems like really interesting to me. So I'm definitely very intrigued by this one. I'm not exactly sure why it's like a fall read to me. I think maybe the cover or something thing just is making me think of fall, but it definitely is one that has stood out to me for wanting to read this season. Next is Anatomy by Dana Schwartz. So I actually had started to read this book kind of recently, but then it was way too similar to the audiobook that I was listening to, so I decided to put it down. But the bottom line is, I will probably be getting to this one soon. This is a gothic love story and like gothic is just absolutely, that encompasses everything that I want from a fall read is gothic that whole vibe definitely is fall to me. I do have to like read the inside of this one because it just, it really is what is pulling me in. So Hazel Sinnott is a lady who wants to be a surgeon more than she wants to marry. And Jack Currer is a resurrection man who's just trying to survive in a city where it's too easy to die. And it's a gothic tale full of mystery and romance. I am kind of getting vibes similar to Stalking Jack the Ripper. Like I really love when it's characters who are in a time period where I'm not sure if this is historical or not, or it's fantastical. Really don't know. I just know that it's gothic, but basically characters who have like a real passion that they're working toward and it's something that they're not really supposed to be doing because like they're women or whatever, things like that. I generally like reading about. I don't obviously like it in real life, but I find it very fascinating as a plot line. Next is a book that I have had for very, very, very long and have not read it yet. And that is The Lady Rogue by Jen Bennett. This is the last, actually, no, that's not true anymore because she has come out with another contemporary book since I have read the rest of her books. But the point is, I've read a lot of Jen Bennett, and this is the only fantasy novel to my knowledge by Jen Bennett, and I haven't read it yet. And I don't really know why, but it is set in Romania. It's dealing with like Dracula's ring, and the main character, her father was a treasure hunter, and she's like trying to find him, and he's gone missing, and there's all of this mystery and intrigue, and I feel like you're kind of getting the vibe of why it might be kind of like a fall read to me. It's not explicitly about Dracula, but you know, it has those vibes and like there is that involvement there, but it once again kind of has a gothic thing going on. So I think that this is one that I really need to finally get to you because it has been way too long that I've had it and haven't read it yet. I've included it on so many fall TBRs in particular. It's just ridiculous at this point. Next is The Sacred Lies of Minnow Bly by Stephanie Oakes. Another book that I've had for a really long time. Are we seeing a theme here? Classic. But I've just kind of been gravitating towards those books that I've had for a really long time lately and I don't know why it's kind of interesting but this is about a cult and I've only read one book I believe about a cult and that was last year I read the Courtney Summers book that deals with a cult wasn't a huge fan of that one. I was kind of let down by it, but this one I have heard some really amazing things about. It is kind of like an underhyped one. You don't hear about it all that much, but I feel like everyone who has read it, like who, everyone who has read it is recommending it is basically what I'm trying to say. So I don't think I've seen a negative review and that is really intriguing. I feel like it's something that's definitely going to be unsettling, but like what more could you want around this time of year, you know? Next is The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. I am definitely late to the party uh, for this one because it has been super hyped up on TikTok like quite a while ago, but you know, I mean, 
at least I'm arriving at the party, I guess. I believe that the sequel to this one is out now and that or like it's coming out really soon, but I just haven't been in the mood for it. It has not been the time for me. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to spoil it for myself by reading it and just forcing myself to read it. I want to wait until I'm ready. And now I feel like I'm ready. This is like a dark academia story. It is secret societies. I don't know where the secret societies are, but it is like such a beautiful book. I love this cover and I love the end papers and everything. I think the ones on the back are different. Yeah, they're kind of different, but it just seems like such a fascinating setting and everything. Just kind of all of the fall vibes that I'm looking for in a nice, pretty package. Next is Timekeeper by Tara Sim, another TBR veteran of mine. <laughs> this has been around for years and years and years and just haven't gotten to it yet. It is a, in like alternate history and it's set in England, but like clocks are what control everything. So these clocks rule England. I don't really know what to make of that, but I know it seems like such a fascinating concept to me. So I'm so intrigued to know more and like see what exactly that means. Like how do the clocks control England? You know how what is happening basically? I have a lot of questions that I would like answers to. I'm not sure if this is Victorian. Yes, it is Victorian. I wasn't sure if it was Victorian or Edwardian, but it is Victorian and yeah, the world is controlled by clock towers. So what, I don't know. I'm just very interested in that concept. Really unique and I love a good unique read. Next is more of a recent release, probably the most recent <laughs> release on this list, but that is Love in the Time of Serial Killers by Alicia Thompson. I think this book sounds just so funny. Like it could be hilarious. It's about a girl who is obsessed with true crime as many people are. I'm not one of them, but I know so many people nowadays love true crime are just like really, really fascinated by it. And this main character is as well. But because of that, she has a hard time like trusting anyone or letting anyone in. And she can't date because she's like, well, I just suspect like everyone, you know, there's something wrong with them. So she ends up having a new neighbor move in and she suspects he's a serial killer so like I I just feel like that's gonna go so many different ways and going to be a lot of fun and yeah I just I think that's such a good modern concept a unique concept for sure but it sounds really strong like could not be more interested in this one and the last book that I have on my fall TBR here is one that I'm not actually sure if I'm gonna read but I feel like I should and I'll explain myself. So that book is Brazen by Katherine Longshore. So the reason I'm not sure if I should read this one is because I had listened to Tarnish and Guilt on audio this past week, actually, like when I'm filming this, I listened to them so quickly. The audiobooks were fantastic. And I was like, okay, now I'm gonna move on to the last one, yay. But then I realized, this one, there is no audiobook for it. It does not exist. And I'm so sad about it because I really enjoyed the audiobooks. But when I was like, I had tried to physically sit down and read the other books before, but I just never got into them. So I'm like, is that going to be the same case here? Like, I just don't know what to do now because I was so banking on listening to that audiobook. So it's really, really unfortunate. I'm like, is this good enough for me to read it? Or like, is it, cause I've kind of, what I mean by that is I had seen a review saying it wasn't as good as the other two. So then I'm like, well, do I even bother? Because this is the one that I'm gonna have to like work the hardest to read. And I know that seems so lazy because like reading is my thing. This whole channel is about reading, but there's just certain books I just want to listen to the audiobook for. And like, especially if I started the series on audio, I just want to listen to the rest of it. It's, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but bottom line is I'm really, really sad that there is no audio for this one because the other two were so good. But if you're unfamiliar with this series, it is quite an old one. I'm not actually sure when these came out, but it's definitely been a while. So this one came out. Oh, this one was 2014. So that's not so bad, but I think this is the most recently published one. So they are all about the like Tudor era romances. You have one about Anne Boleyn, the other one was about Catherine Howard, but also it mostly focused on like a friend of Catherine Howard's. And then this one is about Mary Howard. So this one I think is actually about Catherine's sister. I don't know. Honestly, I listened to them both back to back and so quickly and like everyone has the same name. It gets really confusing. But the point is, 
Tudor era, court life, all of that jazz. Uh, and they are like fun takes on that because it is YA, so it's kind of like a YA look at things. Makes it really easy to read. You will like learn a little bit, but obviously like look for actual history books if you are interested in learning a lot. They use modern language, which just makes it so easy to devour. If you like Rain, essentially, like the TV show Rain, you would love this series. Okay, so those are all of the books that I'm hoping to read in fall, uh, which is almost over, but you know, it's fine. I can read these books any time of year. These are just like the ones that are kind of gravitating uh, towards me, or I guess I'm gravitating towards them rather for fall. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another new one soon. Bye!